Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Opportunistic Trader. It's just after 11 on Friday. It's a big uh, TGIF Friday. It's been a volatile week. It's been a great week, though, at the Opportunistic Trader. And we're joined now uh, by Phil Flynn of the Price Futures Group and Fox Business Contributor. How's it going, Phil? I'm doing great. Uh, the stock market's up. Everything's looking a lot better. And uh, <laughs> fear and panic is taking a holiday, at least for Friday. Ah, well, we don't mind a little fear and panic. You know, there's a lot of opportunity that comes from fear and panic. But yes, uh, s and is up 23, NASDAQ's up 109. It's been a volatile week. Uh, you know, starting with the equity markets, you know, what have you been hearing as, you know, we've been hearing a lot of yields or, you know, been spooking the market, um, you know, midterm elections coming up, China trade war. You know, wh what have you heard uh, has been the cause of the sell off? I think all of that. Um, and, I, and I also think that's the fear of third quarter quarter earnings, which basically should be the best in history. But some people are worried that, the, you know, that we're hitting peak earnings, that U.S. companies can't make any more money than they already have. Um, and it's causing uh, some people to take money off the table. Interestingly enough, yesterday I was on um, countdown to the uh, closing bell on the Fox Business Network with Liz Clayman, and uh, we were on with Mohammed El Aralian, um, the big bomb king, or the yeah. form, one of the bomb kings. And he was he basically said what I had been thinking in that you know that this sell off in the market uh, is a great buying opportunity. Um, he's been around the block for a long time. And I think what he was saying from a long-term investor viewpoint, um, even though you're seeing volatility, you're seeing the best economy maybe of our lifetimes. And that the underall fundamentals of the commodities are better than, are, of the economy are probably better than they've ever been. Uh, but for day traders, and I know Larry had a great day yesterday, way to go, Larry, you know, with the swing trades, it, it does present opportunity. So from a long-term investor viewpoint, he's saying, how would you have felt yesterday if you dumped everything when the stock market was down 700, <laughs> you know? Uh, and, and, and so I think the long-term investors have to realize that this is nothing more than a correction. The uh, short-term traders have to look at... Uh, uh, great opportunities and, and and what a great day you know you know why you like high volatility days is because if you have a bad trade um if you have no volatility it may take you a month to make up for it you know in a high volatile market you have a bad trade you can make up for it in 10 minutes sometimes well yeah and you know two things interesting that you point out there one is you know from the long-term perspective absolutely that's one thing larry continues to say you know when these long-term guys are selling the answer is never. You know, we've dropped, you know, s and is still up on the year. We've still had a nice rally over the past few years. And, you know, those guys are sitting pretty and they're sitting, you know, still with their positions. And, you know, they think regardless if we drop 5 percent, 10 percent, these guys probably are not selling. Uh, but, but we we had we had the doom and gloomers come out of the table though you know uh, we had uh, Peter Schiff on Fox Business yesterday he came out of course he came out of the woodwork we haven't heard from him for a while because gold prices have been going pretty much straight down for a long period of time and you know he was raising the other side of the equation you know that hey we've got unsustainable debt um, you know the, the the trade deficit the trade wars are going to cause global panic. But, you know, while that may be true in the future, the overall fundamentals of the market really don't back that case up. Yeah, well, for the first time in over a okay. year, gold actually rallied yesterday and rallied over $30 on, you know, maybe the idea of the risk aversion, the old sort of theme of gold of, you know, uh, uh, another sort of asset to buy when everything's going bad. Uh, that was the first time we've seen that in a long time. And actually, the follow through is, you know, gold's down six bucks today. But we're, you know, at pretty interesting levels because we've been between 1210 and 1190 for a few months now. Uh, yeah, what was interesting about that move, I thought, was that we saw a lot of buying coming out of Asia. And, and if you look at the gold bull market over the last few years, when the gold bull was doing good, a lot of the money was coming out of India and China um, and other Asian companies, obviously. 
uh, we, we saw that contract a little bit over the last couple of years. We haven't seen the Chinese as big of buyers as they were in the past, nor the, the Indian buyers. Um, but the shakeup in the Chinese stock market, we actually saw a surge of Asian buying, uh, which we haven't seen in quite a while. So I don't think it was just, you know, you were saying where, where did the risk aversion started? It really started in China um, and, and getting that physical market going through. But you're right. Today, we're not getting the follow through, even though we look like we, we could be potentially breaking out. Um, but um, from a technical viewpoint, if we can rally back up at the end of the day on gold, it could be a really good technical bottom for a good swing trade. Uh, but obviously very dangerous. But for a swing trade opportunity, uh, absolutely. But we, we have some work to do. Yeah. And, you know, crude, I know you follow that very, very closely. Uh, we, we traded up to 77 and came back to yesterday. We traded 7052. What's mm -hmm. your thought on that? Anything changed at it all in the dynamic or it's just purely the market was long. We've had a, a kind of volatile week and it was just kind of following the liquidation of the equity markets. I think it was following the liquidation of the equity markets. You know, as I said, the last couple of weeks, 75 was a way station for, for oil. If it got $2 up, up above that, it would be a buy. If it got $2 below it, or excuse me, it would be a sell if it was $2 above, $2 below it's a buy. It's a little more than $2 below. So we think it's a buy. Uh, and I think the sell off in the stock market overdid it. Uh, but also, I think one of the reasons why the market's not doing better today on oil with the stock market being up um, is this report from the international energy agencies uh, or the guys I call the great underestimators. You know, I don't know why anybody ever listens to these guys. They always move the market when they come out with their, their reports and the reports are always wrong. Not once in a while. They're always wrong. The International Energy Agency, if they tell you demand is going to be lousy, get ready for, for it to get going. If they tell you it's going to rain, okay, um, make sure you leave your umbrella at home. I mean, these guys are the worst. Um, and, and I don't know why they're so bad other than they, they're, they're trying to talk their book. And, and why, I, why they really bug me is a few years ago, of course, um, when oil prices were starting to come back up and, you know, they were, they were poo-pooing the demand side of the equation say demand's going to be lousy for the next couple of years. And so don't invest in oil basically because, you know, we're, you know, there's, you know, forget every green shoot that we're seeing in the economy. We believe it's going to be crap, crap demand, excuse my language. Um, they get, they get my ear up and they broke the market probably a couple of dollars on those reports because the market didn't have any conviction about where it was going. Um, a lot of people that were thinking about investing in projects probably didn't based upon their forecast. And here we are a few years later, they're telling us, hey, we're in the red zone for oil. We're going into a danger zone. You know, we don't have enough oil and that's going to derail the, the global economy. It's like, well, who's to blame for that? Partly you guys are because you were telling everybody that there was going to be no demand and we were going to have a glut forever. Now you're telling us, hey, we didn't invest enough money to get oil and it's going to derail the economy. So anyway, let me tell you how I really think, uh, Mike. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, come on, well, guys. I will tell you right. the one thing that I find interesting yeah. about the markets right now, just general observation, is it's been a crazy, crazy week. You know, we've seen uh, volatility. VIX got up to 28. But Today, it's really quiet. Even yields, if you take a look at the 30-year bond, we're in a 17-tick range. For the bond on a volatile week, that's very, very quiet. 10 years in an eight and a half tick range. S&P, the day range for the S&P is not that, it's about 20 points. So as of right now, very calm. FX markets in a very tame range, you know, whether it even be dollar yen, if you take a look at that, 50 pip range. On a volatile week, that's, uh, you know, pretty quiet, eerily quiet on a Friday as of right very, now very uh, and, and they, you were pointing it out before crude oil it's a, a dollar right. range nothing uh, too yeah. crazy yeah no i think you're right i mean and i really expected a little bit more volatility but very interestingly enough we had uh, the close on the s p yesterday and the dow i think what there was a number on a very good analyst uh his name escapes me for the moment but uh he he came out with a report yesterday and he basically came out and said this is a very critical day for the Dow. If the Dow closes at 25, you know, 
I forget the exact number, 25,462 or whatever the heck it was. Uh, if we close above that, the market's going to recover. If we close below it, it's going to continue the sell-off yesterday. Well, it closed right at that number and then right on the close, it ticked one tick below. But interestingly enough, as soon as we saw the 315 close uh, at, and the, or the reopen at four o'clock, the algorithms kicked in. OK, so we saw a lot of surge buying yesterday right after the close. So what that tells me, the computer um, computer programs um, that were selling, 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 basically covered and took their profits uh, after the close yesterday. So a lot of those algos have gone to the sidelines here a little bit. And so they had major sell signals, major cover signals. So I think that's why we're kind of in this nowhere zone right now. Um, you know, I think you had your margin call selling yesterday from the day before. You had the computers do their thing. And to me, stability right now is a very positive sign. Now, as you know, it's, it's not over till it's over. I mean, we could have another sell off late in the day, but every few minutes that go by right now, I think, you know, uh, the odds of the big sell-off are over. And you could have a day like we had back in February when the market was down, that I was down 600 one day and then up 600 today. You know, you're up 300 points on the Dow. You could be up 700 before the day is out. But, you know, I, uh, but so anyway, but yeah, hey, I have to Larry. Like um, Hi, Larry. How are you? No, I, 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 you know, I'm looking at option pricing and to me that always gives away sort of the goose because that's where you can get your most leverage for the money. And uh, straddles are, I mean, the straddle yesterday was fifty two dollars <laughs> now that it's, straddle was that crazy yeah now it's 19 so i mean you, you could be you could be right um you know there could be a move up but the the option pricing is pricing really a nothing day which is surprising to me um given you know given the movement that we've had and you know i just think they've sold it off so much that it needs a day of pause but in my yeah. mind, just me speaking, right. I, I think we're not even close to out of this thing. <laughs> I mean, I well, think we, it's we gonna, might not be, you know, and um, they're calling you know, like the, the great correction. We're three and yeah. a half percent from an all time high. I mean, I know that's not, the thing. Yeah, I mean, that's that's my point. I mean, the last time we had the, the sell offs of all sell offs was just a few months ago. Right. You know, and we did a perfect, almost almost perfect 10 percent correction. Uh, and it was a screaming buying opportunity. And you're right, just from a pure per, uh, correction, what did we do, 5% from the high? Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe from high to low. I don't Right, know, yeah. from high to low, yeah, yeah. maybe 5% in yeah. intraday. So there could be some more noise in here. Yeah. Um, th but you know what's going to be hard, I think, to sell this into earnings? The earnings are going to be fantastic. I think they're going to beat expectations across the board. I think they're going to come out stronger than anticipated. I think you do have a little FOE, fear of earnings, right? Mm -hmm. I think that played into the sell-off a little bit. And, 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 you know, everybody was saying, well, the earnings are priced to perfection, so we're selling off before the earnings come out. Well, if that's the case, and why are you saying, you know, uh, then maybe we'll we'll do what we've done on the last earnings sessions, and that means it will surprise on the upside, and and we'll be both. But I'm right from a technical viewpoint, it's the wild west out there. You know, any anybody's call, where round and round she goes, where she saps, nobody knows. Uh, but from a big picture, I you know, I I don't believe that we're we're in an October '87 crash mode. I really don't. No, it's 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 funny. Yeah. Uh, it's funny. Uh, we've been getting calls from every newspaper in the country uh, for commentary on on like one or two down days. It's funny, and you know, right. one of my statements is this is not even close to a crash. This is nothing. Um, it isn't. It is. But you know, I was actually <clears throat> talking to someone today, and they were saying I think it was Thursday. I mean Wednesday, uh, the eight hundred point day. They said that was like the fifth largest, I guess percentage volatility expansion uh, in a day. So the one thing that I think is a really good trade, um, and it's really a great hedge for a lot of portfolio managers, you know, family offices. If, you, if you're long, let's say you're long 30% equity, okay, in your portfolio, and you go to volatility, you go to the VIX, and you put an allocation of basically three to 4% down on the VIX, 
what's happening is on each down three percent, which is not a you know never really happens that much. Um, but the market being down three percent, the volatility went up forty four percent. So if if you were long vol a tenth of what you had in long equities, you actually made money, you know, on right. the day. And now you're still able to stay in your positions and we're at a higher level. So it's, uh, you know, it's interesting in general to look at that stuff. And uh, I think volatility, it's, it's funny. The programs or, or, or the traders are always selling it because inherently these are flawed products and there's decay in them. Um, right. But when they work the other way, it's a mad scramble to get them on. So, uh, you know, well, watching, if we go down another 5%, the volatility could be at 40, literally. You know? so I, I, I agree with you, which is kind of interesting here. What, uh, remember, and you make a good point on the volatility, it, and I'll, you know, kind of interesting was a few months ago, right? When we had the big blow up on the S&P options. What month was that? Um, what, in February? We had, when... What, back in February, was it? I believe it was February. Yeah. When we, we had everybody in the world, February, back in February, everybody in the world was writing, writing, you know, writing, you know, risk down. You know, the risk was never going to go up. The vol is going to stay low forever. You had high frequency traders writing options to make up up for their losing money on their options programs, right? Yeah. And the sad part about it is they were being rewarded with with making money, you know, on the strategy for like a year and a half. Um, but then, of course, we had February, and we had the biggest blow up in some of these funds. We had a lot of these funds that really got into big trouble. You oh, know, yeah. guys that were making millions, you know, printing money, uh, uh, writing balls basically for years. And we had some major, major blow ups. Interestingly, this time we had the big blow up on ball. I'm not hearing the same type of blood on the street. You know, we have heard some hedge funds were closing. Uh, we have heard, you know, some talk of that. But oh, we're not did, really? hearing that same kind of blow up stuff that we've heard yeah, the, the journal had some hedge funds closing, but I don't think it was necessarily because of performance or a problem. Yeah, I um, think I think yeah. it's it it was that product XIV. So XIV yeah. went to zero. <laughs> like right. we were watching yeah. that stock go from a hundred to zero. So I think there right. was a big hedge fund in Chicago. I forgot the name of it. You could probably look yeah. it up. And right. they were they were forced out. Um, yeah. and liquidating, they lost billions of dollars on just that right. those positions. Um, right. You know what's interesting? Yeah. If they right. didn't, if they didn't get liquidated out, right. they would have made maybe, money. Maybe. <laughs> well, that's it. Well, that's the thing with with the vol the the that vol trade. It, it's like going through a minefield, you know. And, and um, I remember the great Gatsby's. Uh, actually, the great Joel Greenberg, who I actually knew pretty well. Um, he was in the one of the new Gatsby's or whatever. And then, of course, he was betting. <laughs> that you know that interest rates were were going to basically you know go down you know and he kept playing against the big banks he heard this belly trader made millions trading bellies and he's going out uh, off the that the uh, that the fed was you know that interest rates were going to go down finally the banks came to him and said listen we can play this game all day how much you want so he blew out of his position but he was actually right i mean he was very close to the top of the market and the market collapsed so just a one of those great trader stories of, of getting caught on the wrong well, side listen what do they what right. what do they yeah. say timing is nine tenths of the law it's probably that's, ten tenths that's, that's, <laughs> it's exactly everything correct. So. exactly correct yeah, it is no. everything Everything. And uh, comedy and, and, and comedy too. Com commodities and commodities and comedy timing. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Hey, Phil, a uh, question coming in from uh, somebody, and I know we spoke about it a few weeks ago, and I don't think it was your specialty, but maybe you have some more info on it. But lumber, 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 lumber has been getting crushed. And I actually have two charts yeah. of it one of lumber and one of XHB, which is the housing index, and they look very mm -hmm. similar. Lumber is mm -hmm. down basically. Um, over 50% from its highs in May. And it's just been getting crushed. And actually today though, as uh, one of our customers pointing out, it's having mm -hmm. a bit of an outside bounce right now. We gapped lower and are trading mm -hmm. a little higher. Uh, have you heard much about lumber prices uh, relating to housing, lumber on its own and anything? And it's okay mm -hmm. if you haven't, just wondering. Oh no, I have actually. I mean, we, earlier in the year, lumber of course went up as the housing market started to come back. We had the trade spat with uh, Canada. 
Um, and that was a, a, one of the reasons to tighten the, the Canadian market, uh, U.S. buyers, you know, so that's what really caused the big run up earlier in the year. We started to sell off because we, we hit the peak. We got the Canadian, uh, the uh, U.S. Mexico Canadian trade agreement. I got to get that right. USMCA. Mm. There you go. The USAMCA, you know, uh, basically agreement done, which which took away some of those trade barriers concerns when it came to cotton. But what's amazing, I think cotton is trying to bottom here. And what's amazing is that we locked limit down yesterday on the cotton, mainly, be, or, I mean, the lumber, excuse me, the lumber, which was amazing because the timber market across the uh, southeastern states were, were wiped out uh, because of the storm. And you, ha- you do have some timber production in those areas. So one would assume with Hurricane Michael, you're losing, you know, you're definitely going to need a lot of supply. You're definitely going to need, uh, you know, you're losing, you know, some production there. Uh, it was almost amazing that the market kind of had that counter trend move. Um, I think that that could have been the final bottom today. And if we hold on to the rally in lumber, you know, this could be a great buying opportunity because we're, we're expecting the demand for lumber actually to increase as we start to, you know, and energy. I mean, with Hurricane Michael, you're going to have to rebuild these cities and some of them in the next couple of months, you're going to need a lot of lumber. You're going to need a lot of energy uh, and that should start to go up. One of the ways that we are trying to play it because, you know, we're picking a bottom, we bought at the money puts and bought futures uh, so we could ride out any possible limit moves. Uh, but that could have been, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to say a capitulation bottom yesterday, um, you know, buy the rumor, sell the fact. Now, buy the, now you really have to buy the fact because you're going to need a lot of lumber uh, in the next few months. Yeah, also that other hurricane that hit North Carolina as well. Um, you know, just looking at the prices, we did have a small pop after that um, uh, hurricane as well, but that was uh, sold as well. And, you know, as of today, we're making new uh, 52-week lows. Things. Like that. I'd like to just add on, on that note, um, I was actually talking to some mortgage brokers uh, in town where we live, and they said they're, they're – they do mostly uh, new home sales. They said their home sales are down a third month, you know, year over year, you know, from the, from from what right. it was a year ago. So I, I think. Do you think econ- that's because of rising rates or the yes. economy slowing One, down? No, I think it's right. rising rates, which is slowing right. the economy. And, you know, a lot of people stretch, I guess, to get into homes. And now all of a sudden when you do a, you know, a jumbo 30 year or any 30 year, it's oh, it's got a five handle in it. And I think that, you know, changes the payment for people. You know, depending on the value of their home, two to three to four hundred dollars, and that you know is the yeah. difference between but buying and not buying. It, does it not level a lot after a period of time? Because you you also have the the fear of missing out crowd. You know, this kind of waiting, and they're looking at interest rates. They're ready to jump in the market. Rates start to go up. They hold back a little bit to see if things level out a little bit. Um, you know, and I have seen kind of a situation where you do have rates go start to go up and then you have a dip initially, but then you get a, a rush to the bank because they're afraid that they're going to go up even more. So sometimes in that type of an environment, you can see a rebound, but you're right. I think the rate thing short term is probably uh, uh, going to do it. But, you know, I, I think uh, uh, I know that I was happy to refinance my mortgage rate back down to a rate where it is today. And I thought I was getting a great deal a few, few years ago. No, I know. I mean, you, you know, it's, uh, you know, just, it, you know what it is? It, I think it's sticker, sticker shock type of thing. You know, the thing we'll be telling our grandchildren, right, is that, you know, we were able to get a car loan with 0% interest, 0% down, right? Mm-hmm. I don't think we're going to see that again, right? 0%, in, well, maybe we will. Uh, you should never say never. But, <laughs> right, but it, it's, it's probably it's, unlikely. It's, it's probably unlikely for a while, definitely. See, we we paid 0% on it. They were paying me to buy a new car, basically, because, you know, if you looked at, you know, 0% and what, what I could get in the bank, I was actually making money to buy a car. So there you go. Yeah, for sure. Um, Mike, any other questions? For no, Phil? that was great information. Really appreciate it. A lot of great uh, hey. information. You know, it's interesting. I pulled up a chart of the Russell and the S&P. Everybody can see that. 
But Russell, even with yesterday's spike low, we're only about half a percent off of that spike low level from yesterday, whereas the S&P is 2% off that spike low level. Uh, so Russell's clearly underperforming so far today. Uh, Nasdaq's outperforming. Uh, so we'll keep a close eye on that. Uh, but Phil go. Flynn, thanks a lot. Great week. Hey. We really appreciate the help. You come on a few times. You got a lot of great information. Uh, Phil Flynn of the Price Futures Group and Fox Business Contributor. And Phil, thanks, I'm gonna guys. I'm gonna Have see you. I'm gonna see you next week, Phil. See you yeah, next week. Next yeah, week, we're big excited. exclusive. Chicago, uh, get ready. We have security <laughs> ready for you, Larry. Uh, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm yeah, coming in to see you. People, next week, coming but... to Price Futures is Larry exactly. Benedict uh, being interviewed by Phil Flynn. So I love it. In the, the iconic Chicago Board of Trade building. Woohoo! Oh, it doesn't love get it. any better than that at the CME Group. It's gonna Perfect. Get stuff. That'll be fun. And right. uh, we'll also play that on the opportunistic trader after that uh, is uh, com uh, done. So that'll be great. All right, All right Phil. Guys. Have a great weekend. Right. Talk have to you later. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye -bye.